Mr. Chris Matthews, a.k.a. Lethal Shooter. How are you doing, sir? Doing good, brother. Doing good. Oh, listen, I appreciate you coming on the show, um, the rematch on basketballnews.com and Fly TV. So let, let me let me get you give you the quick intro. Um, you're one of the most sought-after shooting coaches in the world. Yeah. Um, which is amazing just there by itself. Yeah. Um, you've worked with numerous NBA and WNBA athletes to improve their shooting. Um, you have, you know, set shooting records throughout your professional and collegiate careers, which is how you got the name Lethal Shooter. And you really hone in on using social media to inspire young athletes in an amazing way. So let me let me start off right there. How, how did you get started in this field? Yeah, so like I got introduced to Instagram um, about five, six years ago. And I definitely just wanted to use the platform to not just talk about myself, but just to let people know that you can make it in life, you know, because growing up in the D.C. area, it was pretty tough for me. But I never really told people my real story. So I just used Instagram to inspire people to understand to never give up because people really never knew my story um, until like as I turned into like the lethal shooter, I started like throwing little pockets and stuff out there. But like I always wanted to use my Instagram to empower um just empower people to understand that giving up is never an option especially our young youth i feel like a lot of people with big platforms don't use their platforms to uh, help others we use it to like oh i just bought a new car or i just bought a house or mm -hmm. all this other stuff and I, I don't use my social media for that i use it uh to to empower the people to know that shoot i, I fail you know what i mean i don't do everything perfect you know and just to let people know that even if somebody's supposed to be quote unquote influential you know we're humans as well definitely definitely you know and, I, and i've i've seen you on social media with people um from all walks of life you know yeah. stars jamie fox yeah. you know martin lawrence that was a great one yeah. um you know dj khaled you know yeah. you you were doing a promotion with adam uh sandler i think yeah. for his movie hustle yeah and it, was, it was dope because I, um lebron james kind of walked by interrupted yeah. It just yeah. like gave you a hug, gave yeah. you props yeah. and stuff like that. So you were you were really respected across the board. But going back to what you said earlier, your real passion is young athletes, yeah. motivating yeah. them and pushing yeah. them to be the best that they can be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you talk on you, you, you. I've seen you doing motivational speaking for the NBA. You know, rookie transition camps and yeah. you know, really honing in on young people. Talk about that a little bit more of what your your overall message is when you're talking to young people. Yeah, now it's a blessing that the NBA allows me to be around that atmosphere because, you know, I never played in the NBA like somebody like yourself. Mm -hmm. And for the NBA to understand that, you know, my voice is needed in, on those type of platforms is, is definitely a dream come true because it shows me the work that I put in. So a small example, you know, when the rookies do come in, I'm blessed to talk to them about life, to talk to them about social media, to talk to them to understand that, like, you know, you, you might got picked top three, top four, top five, whatever, but you still got to put the work in. You know, mm -hmm. to talk to them about like, you know, uh, use social media as a tool, but not as a crutch. Because, you know, yeah. some guys, they'll use uh, Instagram to be uh, posting stuff that they normally shouldn't be posting. So I'm always yeah. there to help them to understand what they need to do to take their life and their brand to the next level. So definitely shout out to the NBA. They, they let me go to the NBA draft mm -hmm. um, this year to, to be like a spokesperson for the NBA and be around. I was with Paulo in Orlando. So like they understand having somebody around the players, I'm not going to influence them to do stuff they shouldn't be doing. I'm that guy when I'm around them. I'm just always talking that knowledge, always uh, teaching and talking about things to help them take their life and their brand to the next level. So that's definitely a dream come true that the NBA allows me in those type of situations. Now, I, I had the pleasure of seeing your, your passion this past weekend in the uh, Locked In DMV showcase yeah. where you assembled about you know two or three dozen of the top um, up and coming talent in the DMV area um, for a camp where you know the goal was really about perfecting their craft. Right. I mean, they're the top players, so you know they all have a little swag to them. Right. They all kind of right. Things they, you know, but you were really like, no, 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 no. You need to change this. Like you're going right. from station to station. No, no, no. Why is your elbow out like here? Right. Like, why are right. you doing this? And, and you were really paying attention to details with them, and they were responding to you. And that's a that's a connection. It's, it's not easy to get that level of a connection with guys that really you're, you're kind of just meeting. So how do you how do you get that connection with young people the way that you do? Just basically with consistency, with them saying I'm, I'm out here in the streets, like I'm blessed 
to be involved with EYBL. I'm blessed to be involved with the Academy. I'm blessed to be involved with the MBPA. I'm blessed to be involved with Five Stars. So any any grassroots camp there is that's talking to a large mass of people, I've spoken at, I've shot at. They see that the product is real. So it was my job to bring something back home that resembled the Academy, like the Nike Academy and like what Adidas and different companies hold to bring different players together. But the difference about my Academy you know, I don't care if you're the number one player in your class. I don't care if you're the number one shooter. You know, I'm still going to be here to take your games to the next level, and I'm not going to be here to pamper you. There's a lot of a lot of pampering going on in today's grassroots, unlike how I had to grow up, you know, playing for D.C. Assault and playing for different programs that, that mm -hmm. pushed us to the next level. And I feel like what it does, especially to the African-American brothers, we, we crush them to think everything is going to be easy, and then when things get hard, they put their head down and give up. And that's mm -hmm. why I was so hard on the kids in there, because nine point, not, you know, nine out of ten, they're not, they're not having somebody straighten their face, uh, telling them something that needs to be told. I'm not coming at their face disrespectfully, but I'm letting mm -hmm. it be known. If you want to play at a top tier D1 school, the coach is going to be live in your face, and the coach is going to demand something that you never done before. And mm -hmm. to do that at a high level, you got to understand that everybody isn't perfect. I know you can dunk, but can you make the jump shot? I know mm -hmm. you can make the jump shot, but can you go to the basket strong? So mm -hmm. I just feel like in today's game. A lot of the kids, when you see kids training with trainers, somebody could dunk, they'll, they'll do the whole workout doing dunks. It's like work on what you can't do. And you right. see that now, brother, in the right. NBA. You know, yeah. somebody have a somebody can't shoot, they're in the workouts dunking, or somebody can't pass, they're in the workout shoot. Like work on what you can't do. And that's that's the type of showcase that we were trying to have um this weekend. And we're gonna have many more coming up to just empower uh trainers and coaches in different areas to give back to the unit to the to the youth and most importantly. Let the youth understand we don't care who you are. We just want to see you push it to the next level. And I love the point that you just that you made and you kept making, you know, at the camp when you were speaking to them, is to letting them know that, you know, don't rest on your laurels. Right. Like you're getting a little bit of, you know, hype now because all of them are like one of the top players. Right. But don't think that you've made it. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I right. thought that was really that was really great because like you said, they don't hear that. And um, you know, just stuff like like having eye contact when a coach right. is speaking with you. Answer right. it, yes, sir. Like, do like there's stuff like that that they don't they don't hear. Right. And you you were you brought other top coaches and everybody that are around the area who work with them as well. You know, right. AAU coaches and, and right. things of that nature. And I just thought it was a great event uh, as a whole. And it's something that you don't have to do that. You right. know what I mean? You're world right. renowned right now. You know, right. people are you two million followers. People are right. reaching out to you nonstop for you to do this and speak to them and right. you're you're training um you know kevin duran other people asking right. you to be able to to shoot get them their shooting you don't have to come to work out with no DV, dmv kids right. but you do it because you have a passion so talk right. about that passion and i know the area is is special to you because you're from here but still even with that you don't have to do that no nah, for sure like I, i'm i'm actually training with anthony davis at the time and i left to to come back home like you said for like three days but What's the point of building something up if you don't go back home to, to give the kids and give the community the sources, the resources that growing up we didn't have that makes sense? Like we had camps, we had different stuff, but we didn't have like elite camps. Like we didn't right. have different stuff. So I want to use my brand to empower the community where I come from, like around Langdon Park. You know, this I'm blessed now that, you know, with the help of Red Bull and different companies as well, I was able to give away 500 turkeys to families that needed that needed. I was able to renovate three basketball courts in D.C. this year. I was able I was just home and I gave away 300 backpacks in College Park because I used to live in College Park because uh, mm. the uh, College Park Recreational Center. They helped me do that. So like anything I can do, even if I lose money, I'm going to help others because that's what my that's what my dad was all about. And I got mentors. You know, my mentor, his name is Craig Hodges. Like every week I talk to him is, mm. as, as African-American athletes, we have to do a better job that when you feel like you, you got somewhere, because I'm not top tier money, but I'm saying as you're getting there, you can't forget where you come from. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing that my dad was about, that my that Coach Nuts about that's pushing me, that Craig Hodges is about. It's about me just understanding I'm doing a great job, but how am I touching the young people under me to understand that they can do it as well, even if they don't make it to the NBA? Everybody not gonna make it to the NBA, but right. what is your what is your? Are you gonna get an education? Are you gonna be a lawyer? Are you gonna be are you gonna be an owner of a plumber uh, of, of of a store? Are you gonna be a plumber? Like, what are you gonna do after basketball to empower yourself and be a businessman? And that's what I think I did a great job of because I was the first person in my family to get a college degree. 
Mm. So it's like it's certain stuff like that 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 isn't told, and that's why at the camp I was coming at them the way it is because at camps we're not telling them the truth. It's 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 it's, it's thirty kids in here, maybe two might go to the NBA. Right. You get what I'm saying? So you yeah. guys gotta, of course, use the resources. Of course, uh, use the hype. But on top of that, learn how to talk to businessmen. Learn how to when you're in these rooms, if you go on to visit to Syracuse or Duke. Talk, when the boosters are talking to you, hey, sir, what business do you own? Oh, I, I'm, I own Capital and Google. Oh, I would love to take a visit to Google as well. Like, right. learn how to speak like that and don't don't be in these conversations always just talking about basketball. Right, right. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's fantastic, you yeah. know. And, and it's, it's, it's great seeing you break down fundamentals on the court as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're giving them both. And it's real quick. It was just one day. You yeah. know, you gave them so much in one day. I've seen camps. They're there for multiple days and they ain't getting half of what you gave in one yeah. day. So talking about the, the their, their forms and paying attention to detail, how do you break somebody's habits or to have them change their habits? Because some people, you know, especially with, with guys, you're starting so young um, shooting and you're like almost throwing the ball up there. You know what I mean? And sometimes they keep that same bad habit or their elbows way out here or something like that. And you're, and you're breaking all those details down to them do you know what i mean and they receive it and I, I'm, I'm really interested in that level of communication because that's something that a lot of coaches have issues um you know having guys to change bad habits yeah so long story short when it comes to grassroots guys i'm really aggressive with my teaching you know so they can understand that uh i'm not playing if, if that makes sense so like if i say like a good example when i was explaining stuff to your son he was looking directly in my eyes and he'll just do it so that mm -hmm. just tells me, okay, he's he's well grounded. He understands. But there's a lot of pl players that say, shit, I've been doing this since I was in the sixth grade. I'm gonna do what I want to do. And those are the ones I love as well too, because I'm gonna be really, really strict on them to understand. Like, this is what I want, and this is what I'm gonna ex uh, expect from you. And if you don't do it, you can get off the court. Period. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. When it comes to pro players, if I feel like you're not giving me the attention that I need when I'm talking to you, like, of course, like I said, I'm not rich. But I've turned away from pro, from pro guys. You get what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, like, a great example is Grant Williams. I started with Grant Williams two years ago, and I told Grant Williams, I said, bro, I know you haven't shot a three at a high clip, but if you listen to the small details and the fundamentals with footwork and you understand what I'm trying to teach you and you just accept what I'm trying to teach you, and if you fail my way, you fail. But don't fail your way because I understand how to shoot. And, mm -hmm. he, bought, and he bought in. And you saw this season, he finished, like, top seven in the NBA in threes made. Right. The year before him, I had Bobby Portis. And I told Bobby Portis in Arkansas when I spent the summer with him, I said, listen, if you want to be the best shooter, this is what I need you to do with your base. This is what, this is what I need you to do with your hands. This, and, I'm, and I'm talking to him face to face. And I'm letting him know this is what I want. And if you don't do this, this is unacceptable. And do it my way. And if you fail, it's my fault. But don't go back to things that you like thinking you know what's best for you right now. Because the good point is once Grant got it, you saw how he shot Bobby Portis. That year was top three in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Now, Bobby Portis can make his own changes. So now, if I'm training Bobby, what happens is I might not talk as much to see if he makes those proper changes. Then when he makes those changes, I don't say anything. Same with different people I train with. But when I first start with a guy, I'm really, really hard on them. And then once I see that they're doing exactly what I want, and then when they go back to what they want, they they fix it on the next few shots on what I wanted. Now I know it's not as much that I need to – to, to speak about when it comes to teaching you know one thing that you do that, that that worked really well for them and i saw when you was addressing them he was like look i'm gonna show you yeah and you just started knocking down threes yeah. boom yeah. boom and you started backing up yeah. then you're at the half, like almost like a step before half court yeah. just knocking yeah. down threes like it's like nothing yeah. and they're looking and that got their attention really yeah. cool. like, oh, he, he knows yeah. what he's talking about look at him knocking down 10 straight threes you know even beyond steph curry land yeah, and that, I, that's something that I see that you do a lot in a lot of your videos. Do you really implement that, you know, kind of just to let guys know, like, look, I know what I'm talking about here. I'm going to show you. Yeah, I like to have fun, too. Like the other day, AD was like, man, you talking all that shit, knock it down. But I was like, far as hell, I said, all right, throw me the ball. Because I was like hard on him. He's like, well, what, what you do it then, coach? So I did it, made it. He was like, all right, I ain't got nothing to say. Right, so right, like, right. Even It's like even as a trainer, I still have to make sure I stay sharp sometimes because – the best teachers are the people who did it. The best teachers are the people who love that craft. Like we can't, I can't go out there and try to teach somebody 
um, how to play the violin if I don't love the violin. I right. can't go out there and teach somebody how to play the saxophone if I'm not infatuated with like a Kenny G or something like that. So it's like I'm infatuated with the art of shooting, brother. And I and I wake up. I apologize, my daughter. It's all right, no problem. <laughs> you singing? Hold on, real quick. I'm infatuated <laughs> with shooting. When I wake up, I'm thinking about shooting. When I go to bed, I'm thinking about shooting. And that's my whole entire. That's what I. That's what I live for, bro. So it's like when I'm out there in that court, man. It's like. I, I gotta continue to show I can do it because you know to get somebody's attention, you gotta see them do it as well. Right, right. And I, you know, I, I, I spent summers, you know, here watching. You know, my son is on the circuit, so I've seen a lot of the guys that were that were at the camp, and it was great seeing all of them, you know, in one place and yeah. knowing and getting that, you know, instruction from you. And you had so much talent there. I mean, just go to some of the people you had, Amani Hansbury, who is yeah. just. A beast down low, yep. you know what I mean. Yep. He really is. You had a uh, Jamie Jamie Kaiser who just committed yep. to uh, Maryland. Yeah. Um, you know Connie um, Ruth who can probably go anywhere in the country he wants to go. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Winslow who you know can shoot the lights out. I think yep. he got the shooter award. You know, yep. sharp shooter. No, that award. was that was that was Ryan. He got the Jeffrey Winslow award. Ryan. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, right, right. Yeah, he can shoot him out. I mean, you had a lot of of really talented people now do you do you keep following the the local talent did you know some of these guys or see some of these guys play um you know throughout the summer and on the different circuits yeah so what happened was there's a lot of those players that were on a, on the eybl circuit and i was watching them the whole summer there's a lot of players that weren't nike kids that i was watching and brian Inge, uh who was the director of my camp he did a good job of saying hey chris you need to watch this guy hey chris you need to watch that guy and Brian really did a great job of understanding who he wanted to bring into the camp and who there's some top players that we didn't have come because it was like, you know, I want to make sure I'm bringing a certain type of player that understands like the type of level we're looking for, if mm. that makes sense. So Brian did a good job of bringing these group of kids together. And absolutely, I still watch what they're doing right now. And I still I, I, I follow all their platforms because. If they post something I think that don't need to be posted, I'll DM them quick. Hey, what are you doing, man? Like, That's you know good. what I mean? So I'm definitely on them. I'm definitely aggressive with them because I feel like, like I said once before, I, I wouldn't be doing the, the diligence of my community if I'm not reaching out, not just to the elite kids, but reaching out to the community to watch kids grow up to say, like, I can't touch everybody. But if I have the time, what's me sending a message? Hey, man. You know you're not supposed to be posting that or hey man or somebody send me hey my son wears a 15 he says a 15 bet say no more give me that it's our job as, as as black men it's our job as people in communities that when you when you get to a certain point and you can help people you got to help them that's true and i like the yeah. fact that you brought quinn cook somebody yeah. who spoke age to them to speak to them yeah he spoke personally and talked about exactly. how he won at every at every level and but he was also the hardest worker on the team exactly. Like, and he kept emphasizing that. That's all great stuff for them to hear. Exactly. And Quinn is a good example because when he played on the Lakers, um, I had Catavius Caldwell Pope. I had Kyle Kuzma. I had Avery Bradley. Um, I basically had like six players on their team I was training at the time. And mm. Quinn used to train at midnight, brother. Train at midnight because he really wanted to continue to be prepared to be on the team. And that's what those kids have to understand. Everybody's not going to be – Michael Jordan. Everybody's not going to be Kevin Durant. Everybody's not going to be Kyrie. You have to know your role and play at a high clip. You're a great example. You will grab 30 rebounds, brother, when I used to watch you. You'll block every shot. You'll run from rim to rim. You never put your head down. You never let fatigue get to you. And the one thing people knew when they was playing against you, this ain't no easy day. I remember people used to try to back you down. You wouldn't move. Yeah. But, you, but you understood what it took to be an NBA player. But we need more kids to understand that there's roles to be played in the NBA. And I think everybody, once you master your role, you figure out that role and you get better and better and better at it, shoot, man, like now now you're in the league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and, it, and it could be different than what you originally thought that your exactly. role should be. And exactly. I thought it was great that Quinn said that. He said, exactly. my role is different now than what it was when I was playing with Golden State. Exactly. I was going to say, he's like, now that's not what I need to do. I need to pick up full. I need to play defense. Yeah. And I mean, you know what I mean? And that's not yeah. what I could do more, but this is my role. Absolutely. And I'm looking at, so I'm watching their reactions while you're talking to them and while Quinn is talking to them and they're getting it. And I like 
when you even called them out one by I, you know, I'm old school. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I, like, yeah. I like the way you keep them on their on their toes. Make sure they're paying attention. Hey, yeah. what's what to smile about? Make sure that you listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, like that, homie, homie, you know, homie, laughing while we're dropping something real to his to his uh his homeboy, and I'm like. If, if we was at practice at a, at a D1, or you know, in the league, and yeah. somebody's talking, and, and I look over, and you're laughing, man, you, you if you're trying to make the team, the coach might say, get out. That's it. It's over. It's nothing to talk about. You yeah. get what I'm saying? If you're at D1 practice, and you and you laughing, because I played for Tony Bennett at Washington State, and I played for Coach Schmidt at St. Bonaventure. They could be telling us, hey, to stop this guy on Syracuse, he's going to do a play, blah, blah, blah. And he look over, you laughing. Now the whole team got to run for 30 minutes. Yeah. You get yep. what I'm saying? And it's just like that in life. If you're trying to consume something from your boss or you're trying to be in a business meeting, how can I be laughing or texting or not paying attention if somebody's trying to give me knowledge? Right. Yeah. 100%, 100%, 100%. So I want to ask you this. Uh, tell me about um, Hoops Passport and what you're doing with that series. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's, it looks it's, great. It looks great, by the way. I just saw the first one with Atlanta. It yeah. looks great. Tell me about the whole series and all and where you're going uh, with it. Man, it's a blessing, man. I told Red Bull I had a vision that I want to empower different people in different cities to tell their stories. You know, it's not always about me interviewing LeBron or interviewing uh, Kevin Durant. I want to interview the people that help LeBron. I want to interview that guy that was the custodian worker that opened up the door for LeBron. I mm -hmm. want to interview the, the guy that used to cut the grass at the local football field that helped uh emmett smith make it to the nfl it's like and i feel like with, with these platforms we always interview the biggest person no i want to use my interview to to get to the to, to the culture and the, the people that don't get the interview so the, we're, we went to atlanta we went to dc we went to new york we're going to go uh to different places around the u.s and then in about a year and a half two years we're going to go abroad because mm -hmm. i want to continue to tell the stories of basketball culture and especially our culture as well to just show that respectfully, you know, we're, 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 the basketball culture moves the world. You know right. what I mean? And that's why we call it Hoops Passport, because the basketball culture is very is very unique. It's very special. You can be Asian. You can be white. You can be uh, African-American. But we all love basketball. And that's what this show is based upon. That's great. No, it yeah. sounds great. So much success to you. A yeah. um, lot of respect for you. I've been following you for a long time. And that, that's why it was great to really see everything in person this past weekend. Um, it's great to hear that my son was one of the people that looked you in the eyes. And, and hey, was just, man. <laughs> you hey, know what hey, I mean? Hey, if he, if he didn't, you know how to got him, man. I already know. I already know. So, <laughs> hey, much respect to you. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you for coming on the show today. And uh, I just want to encourage you and keep yeah. supporting you. And let me know, when you have uh, plans on coming back to the DMV, you said, for another elite camp. Um, was yeah, that gonna we're going gonna to hold some. It's in the works right now. We're going to hold some. But I come back a lot as well to help the Wizards. So when I come back in town, I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna contact you. But you definitely, you know, respect to you as well. Your son, he leaves it all on the on the court, man. It definitely gives 110. percent And I was watching him. That was actually my first time uh, watching him live. And I I love how much passion he brings to the game. I love that he's uh, he can be. Uh, you can talk to him, and I love that he's a team guy. He's mm -hmm. definitely gonna go far. That's great. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate yeah. you saying that. Well, much respect. I ain't gonna hold you no longer. Um, yeah. that, that, take care. That's dope that you had your daughter in the back and you was rocking. That that was you know I'm a father, so hey, hey, I you know how it is. It's multitask sometimes. That's <laughs> what you gotta do, right? You yeah. want to the interview? You gotta rock her a little right, bit. Right, 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 right. You go to the interview. That's dope. I just want right. to tell you, give you props for that too. Absolutely. <laughs> well, much respect to you. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you for all having right, me. Thanks for coming on. All right.